so uh, thank you for the organizers. Thank you for all the people here. Uh, we're going to talk about um, quality, which is a word that came up today, and uh, how we can innovate in that and fully automate that process. Okay. So first we start by defining what quality is, okay? And also in the definition is what it is and what it's not. Okay, that's what I usually do when I define something. So you don't leave any gaps in the understanding. So the traditional definition is the quality control is the actions you take to control the quality, you measure things, you test, you monitor, etc., and you collect all the data. Okay, then there's a quality assurance because we call it QA, QC. Um, as those, those actions that make sure you keep that control of things, right? Uh, like work procedures, like checklists, like all the quality management system, the ISO, et cetera. Okay, so these are the traditional definitions. And what quality means for us, it's collecting and analyzing the data. It's both, okay? So everybody collects tons and tons of data. You, you do have the data when you produce, Okay, um, because you need to do testing on the raw materials. You get testing from your suppliers. You get cement mill certificates. You get testing from the aggregates. Okay? You have a lot of sensors already. Every plant has sensors. A weight scale is a sensor. Okay, a GPS in the truck is a sensor. Okay, so you, can, you have all that data going on. Okay, there's manual data collection that you make a slump test and somebody writes it down. Okay, so. Uh, Collecting the data for the sake of it, because you have to, because it's mandatory, okay, makes little, very little sense. It takes, it costs a lot of money in the end to collect all this data. And data is a special resource. It's something that when you use it, you don't spend it. Okay, so you can use the data and use it again and look at it this way, look at it that way, that way, this way. Okay, and you can take a lot, a lot out of it. Okay, so that's the point here. It's not mandatory paperwork, okay? Um, so these activities of collecting data and analyzing data, uh, they have to have an impact on the business, on the bottom line, on the money you make, okay? If it's quality for you, or gathering data, testing, it's just because I have to, and it's not making you money, then, in my opinion, you're not doing it right, okay? Because quality has to be Profitable. That department of quality, it has to be a money maker for you, okay? Or at least you need to know from there what the cost of poor quality is, okay? That has to be an outcome. That has to be a product of all these activities, okay? So for, for us, what is within the scope? So what is quality and what it's not, okay? So within the scope of what we define as quality, what we work on is the control analysis, okay, the, the things that make you money, the, the real activity of your business, okay? Uh, you select the raw materials, you define your mix designs, uh, you have a strategy for the products you want to sell, um, you have the production process, uh, the delivery, the pouring, controlling all of that, okay? And all the procedures uh, that tell people how to do all of these things, okay? So outside our scope is the administration, financing. So what makes you money is within the scope, what moving that money around, okay? It's not, it's an important part of the business. You need that uh, to be able to pay at the end of the month and collect, okay? Uh, but you cannot run a business only on that. You cannot just have an office, okay? And make money out of it, okay? So everything that is producing and making you money, that is what we focus on. And that's the data we're going to collect and analyze. So the savings potential, okay? Um, the biggest saving potential in the business, of course, is in the product itself, okay? So I see a lot of times that when people innovate or want to digitalize, okay? They focus on the wrong thing. They focus on administration. They focus on uh, an ERP. They focus, it's not bad, okay? But it's not the main goal, okay? is maybe the lowest hanging fruit for an IT guy, 
because they know what accounting is about. They, they've done tons of accounting systems, but they've never been to a batching plant. They've never been to a precast factory. Okay, so they don't know the core of the business. So they digitize what they know, okay? But the savings is so, somewhere else, okay? So the message here is that don't choose what's easy to do or what is easy to do for others or what, what you see. There's a lot of products available there. You need to choose what's right for your business because this in the end is about making you more money, okay? So the savings come in the product because as you know, Getting a mixed design, it's the start of the process because you take a sample of materials, you go to the lab, you run some mixes, and you say, okay, this is my mixed design, okay? Yeah, this is your mixed design with these samples, these materials from today, the day you took them. Tomorrow they change, the weather conditions change, uh, cement manufacturer changes something with the fuel they use, uh, it, that's incompatible with the admixture, so that's a moving target all the time, okay? so. When a mix design never changes, okay, it's probably because you're losing money somehow, okay. And now we're going to go into the other part because it's a digitalized, fully automated QAQC system. So we talked about the quality, and now about the digitalization. Okay, the world that's coming, it's it's already here somehow, but it's going to be more and more digitized all the time. So everybody is coming into the digital age. The concrete industry, uh, being conservative as it, as it is, uh, has to transform, has to go through this change because it's unto unstoppable, okay? We cannot go be outside of the world. So we need to embrace this, okay? Take action, have a clear vision of what we want to do, okay? Because people that have this vision and engage willingly and soon in this change, we'll have an advantage. So everybody that drags behind will probably be left behind and most likely go out of business for some reasons, okay? Um, so for the digital transformation and transformation is the key word, something that changes, okay? Uh, we define four pillars, four basic things you need to have clear that lead this transformation. First of all, is a specialized software, okay? This is like having a toolbox with a lot of specialized tools, okay? You have screws every size, you have a hammer for different nails, you know? So that is coming more and more every time, okay? Um, people have this idea, and this was true in the 90s and the early 2000s, that you need to have one big system, okay, uh, that is connected, that, that, that has, that it does everything, okay? It does the accounting, it does uh, production, it does uh, payroll, it does everything in one system. That's not the case anymore, okay? Um, because, and I'm going to jump to this one here. Now, linking systems nowadays, it's easier than before, and it's actually maybe the easiest part, okay? Getting data from different systems, it's easy now, okay? So ditch that idea that I have to have one huge system that does everything, okay? Um, this with linking systems and the census and monitoring that you see every day that there are more and more monitoring systems, uh, a lot of maturity systems uh, coming up. Um, you see them, new companies doing this every day. Uh, a lot of other types of monitoring of the concrete, of the trucks like we just seen. Uh, this is going to happen more and more, okay? So we need to link all that together, okay? And that, that becomes an, an ecosystem, okay, which is complex. And then you know that, uh, and this is a good uh, analogy. Um, in Earth, in, the, in real life, the more complex an ecosystem is, the more interconnected, the more resilient it is, okay? So that's why people speak of biodiversity, okay? Uh, this is kind of the case. The more specialized things you have, the more resilient you will be, okay? Because if some part fails, the others compensate. If you have one big system, it fails, every goal, everything goes down, okay? So the last part, this one, automating tasks. Um, there is a lot of untapped potential here, 
okay? Uh, with current technology, with current software, we can automate a lot, a lot of tasks that we currently do manually. And I have clients, uh, there's one client in Australia we have, they need to download the PDF from the batching system, every single batch they produce. And this is a tunnel segment. So they produce 200 a day, seven days a week. And the people there have to download that, take that and upload to another system. Why do they have to do it manually? You know, they have to click here, put that file there and upload 200 times a day. So when that other system uh, was down for three weeks, the amount of work they had to do when it was restored, it took them days, okay? And that's a very silly example, but there are a lot of things uh, that we're going to go into that can be automated, okay? And can improve how you gather all that information, okay? And how you use all that information that's valuable, okay? All that data um, to make more money with what you're doing, okay? So about this digital transformation, this is kind of a bit of humor, okay? And this is like a 50s style, okay? This is what people, most people think. Um, yeah, I have my books in paper. I put them in a computer, job done. I digitized, okay? So I have this paper form that I was filling. I make an Excel file out of it, looks exactly the same, and that's it. And I save every file, like in a bookcase, okay? Um, this is not digitizing, okay? This is just the first step you need to do. There are obvious advantages to this, and this is a good example. Uh, if you take the books and you put them in a book reader or a tablet, the immediate advantage is that you can have a full bookcase in your hand, okay? You can take it anywhere, okay? It's lightweight, you can put it in your pocket, uh, you can read anywhere. So that's an obvious advantage. Until you go in a plane and you forgot your charger. So you travel and, and you cannot read, okay? These are the things that without the experience in digitizing, you never think of. These little things that can throw everything down, you know, that can stop you from using the thing. Uh, you can, next time you travel, Okay, I have my charger here. I arrive at destination. No, oh, the plug, it's, it's a different plug system. You know, I cannot read again. Um, so having that experience, uh, if you had that experience before, you, maybe you had made a different decision about these things, okay? And that's the hard part. There are a lot of options. So how can we decide how to do it? Because we don't have the experience and these decisions will have an impact in the future and there are unforeseen things, okay? So it's not easy at all, okay? It's not magical and it's not easy. Okay, so, sorry. Going back to this digital transformation, it's a really a cultural transformation, okay? It takes a lot of time, a lot of effort to change something in a business, okay? Uh, digital transformation is a new paradigm, so it's a big change, okay? And that means that the culture of the people in the business has to change, okay? And this is the hard part. It's always the hard part that things don't resist change. You want to change your mix design, it changes. Now go tell the drivers that now they cannot add water. They will resist. Now tell the batcher that he has to do it something a different way, he will resist, people will resist, okay? So, and why do they resist? Because uh, I don't know what's going to happen. I have to learn a new thing, okay? I don't know if uh, they're going to find out that I'm cheating here or there, you know, which we will probably will. Um, but a lot of times it happens that technology has been made by the people working on technology. It's not, they are not thinking, about the people using that, okay? So technology only, only works and this digital transformation only works if it makes people's lives better, okay? That's a key part. You need to think of everybody, okay? And the system, and this is what, I, sorry. I was trying to do the, sorry, the pointer, this one. 
okay? It's easier. Uh, there are a lot of systems that are parasitic. They ask for things. You need to feed them and feed them and feed them. They give nothing in return, okay? Um, I'm sure you all have experience with these kind of things, uh, I don't know, an ERP, a CRM or something, that now you need to do this this way and you work more to do it and you get nothing back, okay? So that cannot be the case. It has to be symbiotic, it has to be symbiosis, okay? The system has to give something back to everybody so that people embrace it and they accept that cultural change. Because if they don't, uh, the people doing the actual work, that will probably fail. Or you will find a lot of resistance or people will try to you know, break things, you know, make it fail, okay? And we don't want that. So uh, it's a combination of this, this IT expertise, okay? And uh, experience in the, in the industry that is key to this uh, implementation. Okay, so about us, and, uh, our vision is leveraging that experience and technology. Okay, um, so uh, I talked uh, in these couple of days with many of you, uh, for the ones that don't know yet, uh, I've been working with concrete for 20 years now, half my life. And um, I was a ready mix plant manager, had to set up the lab, set up the ISO system, uh, fix the mixy science, do these Excel sheets and the database to manage that. Uh, then in admixtures company in the technical department, then a quality manager at a precast factory. Every time I found myself doing the same Excel sheets, the same uh, databases, okay? Um, the partners we have, uh, for instance, partner in UK, uh, he's the number one uh, recommended consultant for quality management systems for the British Standard Institute. He has experience, 30, 40 years experience with admixtures technical department. Partner in the US, uh, he started in the industry driving a mixer truck, family owned business. And he's been selling sensors for 25, over 25 years now, very successfully. So uh, this is a team. Okay, this is, and that's what we look for. And that's what we need, people coming from the industry driving this change because knowing technology and knowing how people need to work with that technology and where people cheat and what people need, you know, where the real needs are. And that's the key, okay? So uh, for all of you, we are concrete people first and then we are IT guys, okay? So with this system, okay, uh, we target a lot of pain points and how to relieve them. And these are just a few, okay? This is something that everybody's been talking and it's the biggest one, over designing mixes, okay? To compensate for this high variability, okay? As we've been discussing, there are many ways to, to address that um, with sensors, with procedures, et cetera, et cetera, okay? So we take that into account. Uh, there's also, uh, legal issues like responsibility of what happens with the concrete. Okay, she has the presentation before. They said, okay, my concrete cracked. Oh no, I have a record now that it says uh, why your concrete cracked. That's important. And that's important to have it at hand and that's important to be able to find it when you need it. Okay, because gathering that, putting it in a drawer and not having it at hand when you need it makes no sense. Okay, it makes you lose money. Okay, so also maintaining the mix designs, especially when you have a lot of different plants, you know, it has to can be a pain to say, okay, now I need to reduce uh, 10 kilograms of, of cement across the board for five grades of concrete, you know, and it's hundreds of mixed designs in a lot of plants. So how do you manage that? You have to manage that by clicking a button. You have to manage that by knowing which plants already have that applied or not, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. And there's a lot of routine paperwork that you need to process, okay? And this is kind of a computer magic for a lot of people, okay? But it's actually very uh, low tech technology for, uh, for IT, which is having a, an Excel file or a PDF report, uh, right? um, like a, a mill certificate or a test report for the cubes or the cylinders, you know? Uh, third party lab sends you a report, PDF. The system can read that automatically put that sample in the database, 
Now it's seven days. Know when the 28 days is, over, is due. So if the lab is not sending it, it will contact, send an email to the lab saying, okay, I have, you owe me this 28 days result, but it was due yesterday. Send it to me, please. Okay. It reads it automatically, puts it into the statistics, lets you know if something is off. Okay. All that can happen automatically today. Okay. And this is what we do. And this is how you get value out of the data because you're paying for the test, but a lot of people then just store it. Okay. There's a lot of value in that paper and you are not using it. Okay. And there's, of course, uh, auditing, which it takes a lot of time, a lot of work. You know, it's something that people feel they, oh, I have to do another audit, but that has to be valuable. They have to find the value in that because that makes you money. Okay? The audit is a good thing. Okay. And that doesn't have to be a pain. Okay. So, how do we achieve that? Okay. Like this, I said before, integrating systems. Okay. Um, it's every part of the operation can be a, a ready mix, can be a precast. Okay, um, we even have uh, testing laboratories. We even have admixtures companies, uh, cement companies, uh, R and D labs. Um, put everything into the quality system. Okay, and this quality system becomes a business intelligence system, which is not based on accounting. It's not based on moving the money around. It's based on the actual product you make. Okay, that's where the real money, the real savings potential is. Okay, so we take all of that. So all of these things being at a PDF in the email, uh, a guy taking a slump and typing the, that in the, in the phone. Okay, uh, a connection with the uh, batching system to get the real uh, production data, the real weights for this mixer truck. Those are inputs for the system. The system doesn't care if it's a manual entry or a PDF or a direct connection to something else, okay? It's just a matter of gathering it and making all those connections and getting the right information in real time in the right place. Okay, um, of course it has to be modular and flexible. This is a huge thing we are talking about, connecting all these things, gathering all this data, okay? so. It is a project. It's, a, it's not something that's just, oh, I buy now this, this software and install it and click start and it, it goes. It's not like that. Okay. I wish it were that easy. Okay. But it's never the case. And um, especially because it has that cultural transformation that we need to do. But so what we do is we take the, um, we detect the, what the biggest uh, potential is. Okay. Or the lowest hanging fruit. And we address that. And then we move to the next thing. And then we move to the next. So it rolls out in stages. Okay, so every stage, um, it's modular, so you can pick. There's not one uh, way of doing it. You can choose whatever you need, okay, depending on what you have, depending on what the situation is, depending on what your pain right now is. Um, so you build it in pieces, okay, until you have the full thing, okay, and that gives people time to adapt, that gives people time to learn and to understand the potential and to ask for better things, okay? So in the end, this is what we want to have. It's uh, something that is in the plant, in transit with, I mean, like, a, like previous colleagues I presented here, uh, something to monitor the concrete or just to monitor the truck or just to a flow meter that just counts the water, okay? Can be anything, but you, have, you need to have that in transit control and the control on site with any sensor system that you can have or the, just the guys doing the slump and taking the, the test specimens there, okay? Um, on site, we also include the weather information that can be gathered automatically for any part of the world, okay? That to put that all together. So it becomes uh, a fully automated system. It's a driverless system, okay? And use this word because sometimes uh, I have one guy uh, ask me the same, telling me that, oh, this looks like a Rolls Royce. And I said, no, this is a Tesla, okay? It drives itself and it's more, much more affordable, okay? Because it has to be. It has to be for everybody because we need to transform the industry, so it has to be for everybody, okay? Um, 
So I'm putting here some of the things we do. I couldn't fit more on screen, okay? Um, there are a lot of areas to touch, okay? Uh, for instance, something like uh, maintenance of equipment, calibrations, okay? This is important. If you have your own lab, you need to have things calibrated because you, if you cannot trust your test results, then you don't make the right decisions, okay? Um, what else? Uh, for instance, this one, it has to work on any device okay? because people have to adopt it and they need to adopt it quickly and the investment to do the change has to be as low as possible, okay? Um, for instance, uh, this one here, mix design is updating based on test results. So you need to have what your mix designs are and what your test results are and have a way of analyzing and saying, show me all the test results that were under the specified strength or above the slump, you know, for this time period. And for these, all of these things, we are going to update this and this and that. Okay, click, it goes. Okay. So um, there are many, many, many items that we can improve. Okay, so um, feel free to ask me for any of these or anything that's not there uh, after the, the end of the presentation. Okay, and um, going back to uh, what I said before about the, the experience, okay. Uh, this is critical in making these decisions that will have long lasting effects, okay. And that will produce things that if you don't have that experience, you, you cannot expect, okay. So this is what we do. We accompany people all the way, and this has to be from the high management. So it comes with a vision, with the business needs, the business goals, where we want to be or how, what business do I want to have in the future, in the next two years, five years, 10 years, where I want to position myself as a business, okay? The strategy for that, how I'm going to achieve that vision, okay? It has a lot of uh, influence on the decisions I'm going to make or where I'm going to start or which technologies I want to apply, okay? then. You need to implement that, okay? You need to actually go do it and train people and teach people things, okay? Then you need to maintain that because we, like the mixed science, we define the mixed science today, but things change. Competitor pops up, there's a new opportunity, there's a new project, now they ask this, now the standard changes, all of these things, okay? They happen all the time, that's the job, you know? That's the job, so we are here for that. We, don't, we cannot expect everything to remain still, okay? Um, and then it's this consulting services, this analysis of all these things that make you improve continuously. Okay, so to wrap up some final thoughts that uh, first this phrase that we create our own future, okay? Um, it's not uh, about who we are or how we were born, but who we want to become. We can choose who we are as a personal level and as a company level as well, okay? We, we can choose what type of company we want to be, okay? So um, here's a quote that then, um, as, you, as you already know, I worked in that mixture, and. When I started working in admixtures, we still found people that never used them, okay? This was, I started like 15 years ago, maybe more. Um, people didn't use the admixtures because they didn't know them, they didn't trust them, okay? But with time, like uh, the 90% of everybody uses admixtures now. It's unthinkable not to use them, okay? The same thing will happen with all these technologies, with digital transformation. It would be unthinkable to be in business if I don't have everything fully digitized, okay? And fully digitized is not, in the library example, uh, putting things in the computer and that's it, okay? Because having a book in the computer doesn't make me read faster, okay? And I need to read faster and understand better what I'm reading, okay? So there are other things that I need to do, okay? Not just scan the book. Okay, so imagine, and this is on purpose a presentation about a software product, okay, with 
no pictures of the software, okay? Because this is to imagine things. This is to have vision, okay? In the end, the software is lines of code. It's pixels on a screen. So anything can be done. Anything we need, we can do, okay? It's just a matter of how much work it will take, how well we define it, okay? How we pass, define these requirements and pass them on and explain them to the people actually doing the coding, okay? Um, so how well we do this job, if we do that well, we can do anything, okay? What it looks on screen, it can be anything. Of course, there are charts, of course, there are a lot of diagrams, analysis, okay? But we can make more, we can make them different, okay? So that's not the point, not the point to find the tool that has a chart that I want, okay? It's the tool that can grow with me, make me grow, okay, and adapt to that, okay? So imagine what it would be like if you have no blind spots, okay? Um, that every time you do something, it's exactly right. And if it's not, it lets you know immediately, okay? This um, typical example is that uh, some alarm pop ups, pops up in the, in the batching system and the batcher goes, ah, click, go. Nobody notices until a month pass by and a 20 days result comes low, and then we have a problem. And that problem started a month ago, but someone ignoring something. You know, you know that immediately. Okay, um, there are no unauthorized water additions, okay, by different means, not just these sensors, okay. Uh, you can know how the concrete is setting, what the strength is in real time, what the curing, the durability, because there are a lot of sensors for these things, okay. You get all these immediate alerts uh, and these immediate analysis when a new piece of information comes in, okay. Everything gets into that machine that analyzes everything and lets you know. Okay, um, if, it's, if you save a lot of time doing this routine work, like making a submittal package, okay, you just click and everything happens, okay, and actually we can automate that if you need to update this every three months, everything every three months, it will be updated and automatically sent. Okay, so imagine if your quality control, okay, in your quality department is something that's profitable, because that's what it has to be. Okay. If you think and if you feel that your quality guy is the one with the papers that I know is everybody has no real power to change anything, then you're doing it wrong. Because that guy, that team can be very, very profitable. Okay, when they have the right tools and when they have the right commitment of management to let them apply these tools and let them change the business. Okay, and well, in the end, have a driverless quality management system because all lots of these things happen automatically. You, you define like in a driverless car, a like Tesla, I want to go there. It takes you, it takes you there. If someone crosses the road, it stops, a red light it stops, it turns, the detour, it takes a detour, you know? Um, actually you can tell the car, oh wait, go park yourself. You know? Come pick me up at this time and it will, okay? So imagine it this way. It's not a lot of work. It's something that you decide and make a high level decision on what you want to be, what you want to happen, it happens, okay? So I will find us with this. It's whatever you imagine, there's much, much more. In these few minutes, I, this is just, and not just, just a tiny bit, it's a tip of the iceberg of what can be done, okay? You're seeing what's above water, but the big part, the big transformation is underwater, okay? It's hidden, but we can help you get there. And that's our purpose here, okay? So this is my contact info. Thank you for listening. I know it's late, <laughs> but um, yeah, please go ahead with any question you may have. Thank you very much for showing all the, the global uh, benefits of uh, digitalization. I have a question. Uh, your software, is it like a toolbox where you actually have options depending on what you need and then you adapt with uh, programming on top for specific needs? Is that how it works? Yeah, it's um, the first version of the software was uh, basically the tool I needed in all my, my previous jobs. I, I found myself doing these Excel files over and over again, these the access databases, programming them. So I said, look, every, every new job I have, even if it's a small local company, 
a large international company, I keep doing the same. Okay, in my consulting uh, experience in the Middle East, in Europe, in, in China, uh, I find that all the time. Okay, so that was a tool for myself. It was my tool for the guys in my shoes working in the world. Uh, that was the original thing. Um, with time, like uh, there is a life cycle in the software. So after 80 years of that, of the first release of that, we started working on the new version. Okay. The, Original one is still there. There are people using it every day in, me, in many countries, okay? And it's valuable for them. But the new one is we built it with that experience as, as a platform that we can very finely tune it, ta tailor for every need, okay? We can fine tune it for language. Um, every client can have things named their own way, okay? To facilitate that change, okay? And of course, any features, any things uh, that I, I do this analysis, uh, I have this standard here in Australia, I have this standard here in Malta, in the US, you know, we adapt to all of that. So it's like a platform that we can adapt. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Juan, it's really interesting. Um, two questions in terms of you convincing clients on the capital cost of, of your system, for example, and justifying to them their cost savings. How, how do you go about that? If, if you understand what I mean. So yeah. do, do you interrogate their, their current costs or do you leave that to them to, to work okay. out for themselves? And then you can tell them, look, we, we will save you this money on, on mm -hmm. purchasing the system. So that's the first question. And mm -hmm. the second question, in terms of the driverless, yeah. um, uh, analogy how, how does that feed, feed into ai or, or, or machine learning or something in, in your system okay uh, so. these two questions come up a lot thank you um first of all uh when we start one of the first things we do is we like take a picture of what they have now okay this picture is uh for instance connecting to the batching system and getting a list of the mix designs they currently have making an analysis of that cross-references, referencing that across different plants if they have more than one, uh, see if there are anything that, uh, for instance, uh, a C40 concrete with less cement than the C35, we find a lot of these things. So we make an analysis, okay, uh, clean up of all of that. And then we apply these uh, tools for analysis, okay? And in six months, one year, you can see the difference in the data okay you can see what your mix design was before what your mix design is now we focus on the product on that uh also we we'll focus for instance on the quality management system with the analysis of the daily checklist for maintenance these things so you really see who is doing the maintenance who is not so you can focus on that guy not maintaining the truck properly and you see the, your cost go down on repairs or many how many times it goes to the shop for repairs uh, so there's a very clear, because we have all the data, we, there's a very clear before and after picture, you know, like that with the gym, a fat guy and then a strong guy like that. So it, it's kind of like that. And regarding the, the other part of the question about the AI and machine learning, um, we do that, okay? But it's not about that. Actually, AI is, we, is artificial intelligence. It's more like, a, we discussed this last night, uh, it's more like an intuition. The machine doesn't know uh, what water cement ratio is and how that impacts the strength. It knows that it has input 17, and it means that that influences output 7. But it doesn't have a model of understanding what is going on. It works, and it's useful. Okay? Uh, but the, these things that we know we need to do, okay? Uh, we first you do a lot of statistics, a lot of analysis. There are a lot of very powerful tools, uh, like QSUM, for instance, is a very good statistical analysis tool uh, that we can apply. They are easy to apply, and they are easy to understand for everybody in the industry to learn from them because the AI is a black box. In the end, you don't know how it's doing things, um, and it's it can be useful to learn. I don't know, maybe. The magnesium content in your cement is influencing the air content of your concrete. I didn't know that. The AI detects that, but 
It won't tell you why. Okay, you need to find out why. It points you in the right direction, but that's why I say it's more an intuition it has, not intelligence as such, okay? But we, yeah, we do both, but it's more on the human intelligence first, okay? Which yields faster results. All right, thank you very much thank you. for the presentation.